last day, Saturday, on our way to Oroville to pick up Mike's new prize possession and then heading up to grab Lincoln and back to the shop if all goes well. But Mike's windshield wipers are not working. They're officially done. So, yeah. Trip's not over yet. We got about 10 more hours, 12 more hours. Oroville, Vancouver, Oroville, Oroville, Rust Bros. With a little pit stop picking up Lincoln at the kennel. But Mike's out of windshield wiper, or his windshield wiper's broken. The motor. We were still exhausted and desperately trying to make it home. You guys are gonna get a few minutes of Mike driving and squeegeeing his uh, windshield. Lincoln is a good boy. taking Highway 3, the Hope Princeton. Hopefully it's not snowing, but I don't think it is. Yes, we're all exhausted. Mike had a good time at the Toronto International Car Show, supporting our friends at uh, RXN, Amber and Chris, Reaction Motorsports. We tried to, we tried to pick up a motor, but they didn't have the model. So they have it waiting for us. Oh no, were we supposed to pick it? Oh god. Look, we're going to get the truck right now. We're going to Oroville. Sorry, it's bumpy here. We're going to Oroville to pick up the car, cross with the papers, and then go pick up Lincoln and go to the shop. Or go to the shop, then go pick up Lincoln. But we're getting Lincoln today. Avery's in Daytona at the Spring Turkey Run. So go check it out if you're there in Florida. getting a little bit lighter.
at it, guys. We're hustling. Oh, I spoke too soon. The rain is picking up again. We have four hours or so to Oroville through uh, Hope Princeton. We're going to be at the Blue Moose this morning in about 45 minutes in Hope. The old stomping ground from when I worked on Highway Through Hell. We'd go for coffee and soups to warm up. So we're stopping at the Blue Moose. We're going to fuel up. Then we're heading Hope Princeton uh, to or like Soyuz, Oroville. And then once we're there, we're going to grab the trailer. And then we're heading up to Rust Bros to drop the trailer, and then we're gonna grab Lincoln. And then we're gonna grab Lincoln and head back to the shop. Messing with me. Uh, he knows I'm trying to get the shot. No, it's not messing up his business. He's messing with me. Lincoln's gonna go crazy. Blair's on his, he went up home for a little bit to take a little break and check in on his stuff up north. Hello Sydney, Australia. Fire away with any questions if you want. Yeah, we're, yeah that's awesome guys, there's new uh, merch coming out. Also, all the people that won that we're trying to track everyone down, we've sent emails out. No, I mean, we got about five or ten people that replied out of the 25. So, whoever won in the draw, please reach out to us. Uh, we're back in BC, we're on, we're between, we're, we're in just about in Chile, uh, Abbotsford. Mike was at the Vancouver International Car Show this weekend, uh, hanging out with. Uh, Chris and Amber at RXN Motorsports, good friends. They're on season five. Helped Avery with the build, which is coming out probably this fall, hopefully. We did a draw like two months ago. We'll do maybe another one. Avery's gonna do a draw here in a little bit. I'm trying, guys, I'm trying. We're gonna be probably pushing 11,000 plus kilometers. So over 7,000 miles. What's up, Matty boy? 
It's not taking a beating, it's being naturally cleaned. Yeah, that's a good idea about the redraw, or we'll do a new one. But yeah, we'll think about that for sure. See, there you go, Chilliwack 19, what is it? Yeah. Oil change, I think it's, he's on two. Two de bam, yes, how's up, hola. Mike's gonna do, we're gonna do a whole video about all the cars he wants to sell right now. The trip was amazing, but we're tired. The Chevelle's getting, I don't know. We gotta fill up every two and a half, three hours, and usually it's about 12 gallons we fill up, so. We go about 70 miles an hour, 65, 70 miles an hour, so whatever that is. Oh, copper. Oh God. What if they heard about a guy in a Chevelle with a squeegee? I think he's doing a turnaround here. Oh, he pulled someone over. Craig in Saskatoon. Because we're going, why the Hope Princeton and not the Coke? Because we're going to Oroville to pick up uh, the Trail Duster Prospector that Mike picked up in Vegas, and the trailer's sitting for waiting for us there because we had to wait 72 hours for the paperwork to go through, so we can only cross today. What's up, Justin in the UK? What's up, bro? Mike feed us good. I paid for the goddamn supper last night at Joe Forte's. It's like 900 bucks. Well, he paid 30%. We had a nice dinner with Lauren from Best in GM, who provided the engine to Mike. And we're going to Chilliwack represent Chilliwack. No, this is a rental we picked up in Vancouver. Me, me and Mike took the Chevelle from Logan, Utah, after we met up with the boys at uh, DD Auto Wrecking there, Jeremy and Dave and I think Mark and Traxton. And uh, we just took the Chevelle straight to Vancouver through the Peace Arch and Blair went up because we couldn't trans we couldn't cross the border right away. And we didn't want to have Blair waiting around for two, three days just to cross. So we have there's a place there you can pay per day to drop the car off in, uh, in a compound. So left the trailer there and we're going to pick it up. We rented a truck in Vancouver, in Richmond, to be precise. And um, yeah, Mike went to the car show, international car show, at Canada Place. Sock wallets? Yeah, we're looking at that. Yes, 100%. Yes, of course, we, especially if we had Daisy Duke with us. This thing is, a, this is a brand new GM diesel. The, 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 like the whole, this thing has not even been set up yet. So a recent, it's like in demo mode. Because that's all they had and they said at, at, the, at the rental. And they said, are you okay taking the truck without it being set up? We said, yes, let's just get out of here. So, I got this brand new truck. Obviously, you can hear me okay. That Chevelle's getting louder and louder. Mike's got a lot left in the sock, I don't know. Probably, I think it was close to 20, 18,000 or something. Sorry, this is bumpy, guys, but this is what you get. We're gorilla style on our last leg. It's getting lighter. Let's see if Michael let me go next to him for a little bit.
gave me a little there. He was kind of boxed in, so he had no choice. Oh, there he goes again. I don't know if he's going to repaint this show. I think he'll probably do touch-ups. They might do the redo the hood and stuff. He lo Lincoln does love me. Not as much as Mike, of course. Uh, there was an incident uh, a few weeks, about a, a month or so ago, where I was shooting and I actually stepped on his paw, briefly, very lightly, but I guess he tried to nip at me. I didn't notice, so you don't mess with Lincoln. Yeah, we're heading into, this is Chilliwack and into Lord's Hope. Poor Lincoln, Jesus. Uh, we're going to be going, we might be, yeah, we're going for sure at East Coast, going to Fresh Rod. We're going to go visit uh, Bad Chad and Jolene, we'll be chatting with them a little bit. Big fans of theirs. This Chilliwack sign. Alberta guys, yeah, we're on our way to Oroville to pick up Mike's new new uh, purchase from Vegas there, the Plymouth Trail Duster Prospector Edition, just sitting uh, at P&D Pub in Oroville, so we dropped, Blair dropped it off and then headed up to his place, we're trying buddy, we're trying. We have merch, there's a merch, there should be a merch link in the uh, the details of every post, every video here, but also uh, there's an Amazon store being built right now. Uh, we're working with the folks that sure work, so Pioneer Clothing, uh, Rand Pro, uh, Jet Tools, uh, looks like we're uh, working with the good folks there, Rick, Rick who we met, uh, who's awesome. Um, yeah, so that'll be... Probably in a couple, three days here, a whole uh, Amazon store with Mike's favorite uh, tools, the stuff we use in the shop and everything like that. We really do think we are. We're getting better too. I just I've Also, I picked up a different mic system so that Mike will always be mic straight into the phone. And uh, that's that. So we're going to do, do that. We might switch from main camera to being like a phone like Jolene does. But yeah, we're working on it. It's been this last few days. We're just getting by. So, I did the TV shows I did. I first started in 2007 on a documentary uh, that was on a channel called Showcase in Canada called Web Dreams. I did season three as my first job on documentary reality. I was an assistant director, so I did uh, got everyone to sign release forms. I helped with the schedule. I picked up the crew. Uh, and that show was about the porn industry in LA and in Canada. So and we followed uh, porn stars or adult entertainment uh, actors, directors, producers uh, for 10 months. Um, and uh, I started to learn how to direct from that. And then, um, yeah, so that was quite an eye-opening experience. And then, um, and then I got a job, the same company that, uh, they had a show called The Beat in Vancouver, which we walked, I walked the beat with the police and the Vancouver Police Department for 12 months without missing a shift, without missing a beat, if you will, uh, in the downtown east side, which is one of the most drug riddled areas in Canada, if not the world, everyone knows it. So I worked on that and got to direct a little bit more, but mostly I was an assistant director. Um, and then I went on to, a show called Chop Shop about a hair salon. I was another assistant. I was an assistant director again. Got to direct a little bit, but I was also the production manager. So I do. I've done a lot. So a bunch of producing and scripted. And then what else? Then I worked on this YTV kid show called In Real Life, where kids tried real life jobs. We traveled across Canada and the U.S. I was the unit production manager in charge of logistics. So I did that for two seasons. 
helped on some scripted shows. And then in 2010, give or take, I got hired as an assistant director on License to Drill for Discovery Canada. I was an assistant director on that. And then uh, there was an opening to be a shooter director. So, and I didn't really know how to shoot, but they asked me if I knew how to shoot. I said yes, with the big cameras. And I called every single one of my cinematography friends for the next week, bothering them. And we, uh, and I uh, learned on the job as fast as I could. And I, yeah, worked on that and then did a good job for them, Discovery Channel. And then a show got greenlit for Discovery, a new show in BC. At the time it was called Mighty Highways. Mighty Highways. So my first directing job where I was a director shooter was on Highway Through Hell. So Mighty Highways became, during the first year, the, the name changed and they called it Highway Through Hell. So I was with, I was the first five years, I was one of the main directors on Highway Through Hell that you guys see on Weather Channel. So I'm the guy that got the shot of Jamie Davis getting his, um, picking up his new rotator in season one, and I was filming, and it was not fake, it really happened, and his, the, 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 the step on the side of the truck fell off and started dragging. I told my, the producer and the owner of the company to pull over. He's like, well, you're crazy, it's, we're in Tennessee traffic. I said, no, pull the frig over. And right in the middle of traffic, I jumped out and filmed Jamie duct taping the, the leg or the step off the side of the rotator, and we continued on our way. And uh, yeah, so we, uh, so I did that. And then I did season two of The Beat, and then I did all the Highway Through Hells, and I did Air Show, and I did a show called Bomb Hunters on History Channel, and then I did also Ice Pilots, where I won a Canadian Screen Award. It's kind of like the Canadian Emmy. Uh, I've been nominated and won a bunch of those, and then, um, what else? Air show. Uh, highway through hell. Then I helped set up in the field. They sent me and Darren, my buddy Darren Dembicki, to uh, start off and kick off the first season of Heavy Rescue. So we were there and did Heavy Rescue and uh, produced a few uh, regular movies along the way for some friends. And then in 2017, after I'd, I'd met Mike in 2011, we were just friends for a long time. Anyways, uh, he made fun of me having uh, to bail my own hay for horses that my wife acquired. Uh, and Mike always says, Matt, I'm rich and I can't afford horses. And you're definitely not rich, so you definitely can't afford horses. I said, no, no, my time off, I'll bail hay. Uh, with my old the old farm equipment I bought, and uh, I'll keep the cost down. And he said, Matt, you go, girl. And he said, I'll tell you one thing, Matt. I said, the happiest day of your life is gonna be when you sell that farm equipment. Well, after three, four years of struggling, of bailing, trying to bail hay on my time off, I'd rush home in the summer, have a few weeks off and try and bail hay, beat the weather, and after running out of diesel many times, uh, having to get stuff welded, having to, I mean, and running out of baler twine and all that stuff anyways, I was not made to be a farmer. And at the same time, it kind of happened in 2017 that the show got greenlit, Rust Valley Restores got greenlit, and I sent Mike a video of, at the same time, within a few days of my farming equipment leaving after I'd sold it, and he said, how do you feel, Matt? And I said, it's, I'm the happy, it's the happiest day of my life. Anyways, so now I'm, so then I made a deal with one of the local farmers to bail the hay and we split it. Anyways, that's a super long story, but I'm just trying to keep you guys entertained here as we follow Mike. We're gonna pull into the Blue Moose in about 15, 20 minutes and grab a coffee and a muffin or something. We're on our way, yeah, we're on our way through uh, Hope to Oroville. We're going to take the Pro Hope Princeton, um, Hope Princeton Highway to, or to Osoyoos and Oroville. 
grab Mike's uh, newly acquired jewel or pre-owned pre-owned artifact, as Jay calls it. Um, and uh, we're gonna grab that with his rental truck and uh, head for uh, the shop, which is about three and a half hours, give or take, to uh, from uh, Oroville to uh, Russ Bros and Tappan in Russ Valley. And then we're gonna go grab Lincoln and yeah. And I'm gonna head back to Vancouver. I gotta, I'm flying to see Avery on Monday at the uh, end date. Well, I've lost you guys there for a second. That's how nice it is. Always, always, my, my favorite thing when going to work on Highway Through Hell was this drive, because the mountains just got, just just uh, start sprouting up. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna go to, uh, we're on our way to Oroville through Hope Princeton Highway, and then Oroville, grab the trailer and the truck, cross the border with the paperwork that's now there thanks to Summit Customs Brokers in Oroville and uh, Okanagan, I guess. And then uh, Avery's in his third chimester, yes, isn't he? Avery's in his third trimester. Um, and then we are heading to the shop three and a half hours away. Oh God, is that a cop? Shit. We're good. Um, and then uh, going to the shop, they're gonna pick Lincoln, pick up Lincoln. How nice it is here. Oh god. Someone come on now, we're good. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going through the home of Jamie Davis uh, towing. And uh, the home of Adam Gazzola at Mario's Towing. Gotta say hi to Mar uh, shout out to Adam Gazzola at Mario's. Adam's a dear buddy. I missed him when he left Highway Through Hell after season three, but he was on to bigger and better things. Now he's like running the whole Mario's operation, like in terms of like hope and merit. And uh, yeah, we're excited to go see Lincoln. I can't wait. I, we were thinking about it yesterday. We almost brought us brought Mike to tears and me to tears, thinking about picking up Lincoln and how happy Lincoln is, but also how Lincoln might have thought that now, how he's been gone so long that Mike abandoned him. So he won't want to leave Mike's side. Probably gonna be a bit laggy intermittent here, guys. I will be filming the reunion with Lincoln. I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna do it live or not. I'd like to, but I kinda wanna save it for the edit. Yeah, and then I'm heading back to Vancouver tonight or tomorrow morning, and then flying out to see Avery Monday in Daytona. We're gonna do a bunch of Florida stuff. I'm from Quebec originally, I'm an English, Englishman from Quebec. Mike doesn't like flying because he's got over 500 flight hours while he was doing rock scaling. They still have the rock scaling company and Connor runs that. Uh, they work a lot with CN Rail. They got a contract. Um, but Mike, on the last bits of flying, and because they would fly mesh, mesh up the mountain, uh, rolls of mesh, or they would fly equipment up. You know, they they've done a bunch of stuff, really cool stuff. Like those, uh, they've installed uh, avalanche cannons. They do anything on the side of a mountain they can do. Mike's like quite amazing to see on a rope. Anyways, um, just after flying so many hours, and especially after the pilot said on one of the last few flights, he's like, "Hey guys, we're technically." three crashes past what's normal right now. That combined with the, they had a, 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 an in and out system in one valley and one canyon where you had to go fly in, let's say down the right to fly in with the helicopter. When you're flying out of the canyon, you would fly on the left kind of thing. Anyways, there was a few times when there's some new pilots uh, that were there and they were kind of flying in the, like almost into each other. So that freaked him out. And another time during like heavy rain or fog, or I don't know, if I, probably fog, 
and the clouds there in, in the mountains and uh, the pilots yelling over, can anyone see the side of the mountain? And uh, after that, Mike was kind of done. He doesn't, he, Mike is very much needs to be in control. He's an extreme alpha. And uh, he, he's, he figures he's had his uh, near death experiences. He's almost been picked off by rocks a dozen times. He's had many times where he's told me, many stories he's told me about rocks have like literally missed his head by like inches coming down the hill like the rock the size of your fist or the size even of a quarter or, or a silver dollar coming down the hill you know that hits you you're dead so he's had a lot of near near death experiences and figures he's tested his luck in situations that are out of his control enough so he will not fly dying for a coffee though, I'll tell you that. I'm 47. I, 14 years ago. And before that, I used to work for a cigar distribution and tobacco distributor in Canada. We used to, I used to work at a cigar store in Montreal called Davidoff. They make cigarettes and cologne too. So I used to work there and work for the family. They were lovely. My, Avery did fly to, day, to to Daytona, I guess. Freedom 55. My God, I wish. I'm never going to stop. To work with Mike, yes, you have to be extremely patient. Oh, my God. Last night, Mike stayed over at my apartment in Vancouver. Here's a little story. And I have... And I went to bed watching a movie with the ear, earphones in. And he was still sleeping on my couch. He doesn't... You know, even though I offer him my bed, he never takes it. Um, he was sleeping on the couch, and uh, we take. Mike takes his coffee. Mike is a. It's a. It's called a shot in the hair. Really quick. Mike takes. The question is, how does Mike take his coffee? Mike takes at Starbucks what I call what's called a shot in the dark. So it's a venti, so the extra large cup. It's a four shot espresso, topped up with coffee, with room left for heavy cream, and two or three honeys. It is like getting dosed to the extreme with caffeine. And he gave me one the other day and I didn't know. And I was buzzing like an African hornet. Anyways, um, I take my coffee. I just, I'm on to oat milk lattes now. Yes, I know. It's like a goddamn hipster drink, but I like it. Um, anyways, yeah, last night I went to bed with my earphone, earbuds in watching, trying to watch Roadhouse. And uh, at my place, I got two Bluetooth speakers and they connect randomly in the middle of the night. And, but like my earphones were still in and I guess the, 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 my phone was still kind of active and one of the earphones fell out. And for some reason, the uh, Apple music was started playing Cat Stevens and it was cranking through this, the, uh, the main Bluetooth speaker and it's really loud and at one in the morning, Mike gets up frightened and freaking out like what the hell's happening so he's just jarred like out of like perfect like deep sleep comes into my room and is standing over me and is yelling at me Matt what the hell's going on and I'm in deep sleep and I wake up to this massive like large man with dreadlocks this dark figure standing over me and I have a terror attack or a terror attack basically and start like screaming like, don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me and the mics and then we just like and then we both come like i come too and then we just both start burst out laughing anyways we're gonna laugh about that for a while <sighs> yes michael in his underwear standing over me backlit Fuck. anyways we were up at 5 30 this morning we went to go see Ghostbusters last night as a little break in Vancouver at Scotiabank Theater, which is pretty good. Tony, what's up? Shout out to Tony. Yeah, yes. No, he will strangle me if I do anything to mess with his vis visibility. So 
So Mike does work like this. This kind of stuff Mike does, all these mesh systems, that's what Mike does. Plus rock bolting. He's gonna be working in Chase actually. There's a Chase job they gotta finish up. So he'll be there in a few weeks. So he'll be, he'll be, it'll be a little bit limited when we have him in the shop. He'll be coming in and checking in at five o'clock or six. So we gotta have him lined up to get, keep everything going and Blair's gonna keep working on stuff. Yeah, Mike in his underwear is quite a sight. He's like a very large version of Gollum with dreadlocks. You know, from Lord of the Rings. My precious. Another thing that's precious for Mike's is rusty vehicles. Look how nice it is up here, though. Yeah, we're, we're, we finally have a solution for the audio. So it's basically, we tried to do microphones, but then the poor, the poor kids in the office trying to sync everything has been hard. So I just got a, a, a mic, uh, a wireless mic now for Mike. And then anyone else that's with him, we'll have on the sh we'll get on the shotgun vlog style. But at least Mike will always be mic'd, and that's it. Done dinner, and we're gonna probably use the phone, so we can zoom in. Um, Netflix. There's Mike still still squeeching away. Uh, the show was bought through History Canada, and then they sold it to Netflix. So, in a roundabout way, sure. Like the you know, anyways, the, the nuances of how it's made. And all that stuff, but yeah, no, we make our money off History Channel. Oh, Lane Bandit, I was no one behind me, but yes, I'm sorry. Mike loves playing with dynamite, it's his favorite thing. He threatens me all the time with like an eight inch enema. Yeah, we'd love to film Mike doing some rock scaling, it, just, it depends on permissions. That's the biggest thing. It's like we gotta respect CN and we gotta respect the highways, folks. Let's get another drive by here. I know, right? Um, what's it like having such a badass for a boss? So, it's awesome working with Mike, though he is not my boss. I own 25% of the channel, or a percentage of the channel and the whole thing. I'm the creator also of Rust Valley Restores with my dear friend Tyson. Um, but yeah, We're, being around Mike is great. I love it. He is very hard on me sometimes. He likes to keep me on my toes, but I, I, he knows I can take it. So we have a good, good relationship. We've, you know, we've known each other for over 13 years now. So I consider him one of my dear friends and closest friends. Bit of a father figure too. Business-wise, he's given me a lot of advice. So. Best part of the trip probably was Bryce Canyon combined with seeing the guys at DD, Auto Salvage and Logan, Jeremy, Dave and Mark and the guys, I think Mark, I don't know, that. forget the, everyone's names. And then also going to see Vanessa and um, the gentleman at, uh, that owns, uh, there's some folks there, some fans. Um, the folks at Wildcat Auto Parts or the Mopar Auto Parts guy 
in uh, Sandy, Oregon. That was amazing. I can't wait to show you guys that video. Just Mopars and Pond Mopars stacked and just like bumpers and cars and yeah, like it's just, it's as it's like the most organized shop. I mean, the guy does it full time, it's amazing. Oh yeah, we can do, we can do background thing. We're, we're working on a, on a big plan for stuff. Our biggest thing was to get this up and the foundation of everything up and get subscribers up and make some money and try to like, you know, put it back into the channel. Blair's up uh, at his place up north in Alberta for a little break, checking in on stuff. I have a passenger with me, Andy. <laughs> 66, Tyson ended up buying that, the, the other co-creator of Rust Valley. We, we, we've parted ways business-wise, but we're still friends, but he still got it. It actually got like T-boned in Vancouver last year with like 20, 30, 25, 30 grand in damage, and it got fixed. Um, but yeah, that actually might come up for sale here. He, Tyson wants to come on the channel and sell his car. Well, we might be able to stop into Lordco here in, uh, in Hope. Hope. Yeah, we're pulling into Hope here shortly to grab a coffee. I'll, I'll film Mike getting out of the car. We're getting Lincoln in about nine, ten hours. I love them all. Netflix, YouTube, they all have their purpose. I'll have their benefits. The passenger's really creeping over with his camera. Uh, Jade City, no. Jade City's quite north, although we have a show right now filming like for my real job I have a production company with a few TV shows going and we have a new show called Yukon Rescue we're filming with the fine folks of, in Daw the fine, fine folks of Dawson City Fire Department we're embedded with them they've been awesome Yukon First Nations Wildfire Land Guardians up in the Yukon Conservation um, So Jeff Kinnon, who works at the company, and he, he was one of the, he kind of created Jade, Jade Fever and was the uh, showrunner and executive on that. Now he works with me on our, uh, on all our stuff. Yeah, we gotta go see Big Donnie. We miss Big Donnie dearly. So here we are, there's a flying J in Hope. You might've seen that on Highway Through Hell. We're headed to Oroville in Washington through through BC on the host, Hope Princeton Highway to go pick for uh, someone starting their own YouTube channel. Uh, yes, number one, don't worry about the negative comments, even though at first they bothered me, but now I don't give a flip, flying flip. Anyways, um, also just you got to keep posting every day. Consistency is key. You just that's the one way to grow it organically. One all, one other tip is if you have a hit TV show, it usually helps with getting all the getting your subscriber base up. We also were friends with. I'm start. I got about ten YouTube channels starting. We got the guys at Junkyard Resurrection, uh, Bobo and Big Easy Luke, um, Throttle Thrashers, Chelsea and Cole. We're supposed to be working with Brad at ProTech, but they're so busy at their shop, he doesn't call me anymore. Uh, Dustin at Active Care Auto, who was in season two with the orange uh, lifted truck that Mike restored with Connor for, uh, for, for, for Dustin. That was the one that got stolen. So Dustin's a, a good friend, really good guy. He's uh, the one that always talks me into doing ridiculous modifications to my vehicles. So I got a 2022 Explorer ST with stage two intercooler and uh, no more downpipes. And it's got, it's pushing like 500 and some horsepower. Mike watches the show, yeah, when he can. Here we go. We love Dave. Dave's awesome. Oh yeah, I also created Backroad Truckers, that show with my dear derelict children there, Big Donnie and Dale and Craig and Angela and Dave Schwant and the whole crew, Junior. There we go. We're gonna see Mike here in a second, guys. 
emerging from his agonizing windshield whopping duties, windshield wiping duties, sorry, I'm exhausted. So yeah, in the beautiful town of Hope, some history on Hope, uh, he's going the wrong way. Or is he? Um, this is where they filmed uh, Sylvester Stallone's uh, First Blood. So that was, that, that, that was filmed here. Also home of Highway Through Hell, Jamie Davis towing. Uh, also Mario's towing and uh, Adam Gazzola, Highway Pirate. So hopefully I don't uh, have any issues here in town. But uh, yeah, this is Hope. Why doesn't what? I know, we just, we forgot to, there's a tow truck. Um, I know, we, Mike's gonna give me shit when we get out, watch this. He's gonna be like, why didn't we get the windshield wiper motor? We we're supposed to pick it up at, oh no, we did get one. No, but they sent one from Sam and Arm, I think. Anyways, it's confusing sometimes with Lord Go. Um, but yeah, we were supposed to pick up, I think they sent one from Salmon Arm to Burnaby, but we didn't grab it. So I'm like, oh, we're getting fuel, that's what we're doing. All right, let's go see what he's up to. Oh, this is, my pastor's gonna get out through my outside, I guess. Michael, we're still on a live. We're on a 40, 50 minute live. So everyone wants to know how you're feeling. You look all right. Do you know, did we, did you get a call from Lord Co yesterday? Yeah, I forgot. I was going to say he's going to give me shit for not reminding him. Is there one in town here? No. Do, are you sure? I'm sure. The only ones are in the interior. Anyway, we're almost there. God, it got snow in the whole Princeton. What could go wrong? We're so close, but yet so far, far away. Anyway, we're almost there. And look, 94 octane. Are you happy? We can't find in the States. How, how, how happy are you to have 90? I'm, I'm ecstatic, man. I'm over the moon. <laughs> Mike was severely disappointed at every gas station we got to, and it would say 91 octane. There was only one with 92 we even found. That was it. Can I have your card, please, to fill up? No, you did fill up. No, I put 100 except for you. You'd gas me up here. I'm not <laughs> you squeaky bastard. <laughs> well, so, I don't want to put $400 on my card. Yeah, you can. Oh, hang on. 94. Mike is happy boy. Select grade. Okay. Team leader. Here, Mike. Take this. I'll pump it. Do, do some Q&A. Why is it not working? Select grade. Mike, you have to take oh, the red God. one. Grab that one. Switch it back. That's why. See that? That's how exhausted Mike yes. is. No working. Okay. Go, 94. Michael, the diesel from flying around here. What, Michael? Oh, right on. Hi. Glad to meet you. I'm glad to oh, meet you too. I'm gonna book with that guy one day. Check on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah. I see them. Russ Bros on YouTube. Right on. Here, Mike, pump that. Here, Matt, pump this. Yes. Take this and do a Q&A. Okay, thanks, man. You have a great day. Take this, do Q&A. Good morning. Hey, guys, what's up? Firefly would be great for trip. Yeah, I'd love to do uh, 11,000 kilometers in the Firefly with Avery. That would be my idea of a, of a road trip come true or your worst nightmare. Uh, yo, 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 Mike. Hey, Tom. Yo, 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 Tom Rice. 91, because they're all capable of producing. Oh, okay, now I know. Coffee, I look cooked. Baked is a better word. 
Sunbeam's coming back out this year, guys. Uh, swamp Donkey. Well, Avery's got to get his ass in gear on the Swamp Donkey. Uh, no, we sold the Ford uh, truck. Uh... Ray Lincoln is going to be one happy boy. We're going to be filming that when we get home tonight. So. <sighs> Baby, it's good to be back in Canada. We want to see a flywheel or four-wheel drive. Ever own any town wagons? No, I've not owned any town wagons. But you guys are asking questions quicker than I can read. For fuck's sakes. I got the wrong one again. I'm zero for two. Diesel? Is it? Yes, it's diesel. Oh. Where's the phone? Oh. Here, I got it. Take the receipt. Nope. Oh. Okay, hang on. Diesel. Yeah, yeah. Fresh, Fresh, Fresh load of diesel in the face. Hello from Mexico. Buenos dias, amigos. Spanaway, Washington. We were there yesterday, somewhere in Washington. You want this card? Yes, I want my card. What else? Epic road trip. Epic is not the word I'm using right this morning. <laughs> anyway, we're almost back. I am proud of my Chevelle, man. It's, kind of, it's like that song, we've come a long way. We're changing day to day. Or Neil Young. Your chrome heart shining. Long may you run. Michael, I told him about the story about tell him about what happened, how you felt, what happened last night. Ah, uh, I'm passed out of Matt's apartment there at one o'clock in the morning. Who came on? Cat Stevens starts cranking out of the, the stereo at one in the morning, so. I go to wake Matt up to tell him what was going on. He thought he was about to get raped and murdered. He, he squealed like a little girl. It was a funny, anyway, it was pretty funny. Uh, I think I traumatized him slightly. Yes. <laughs> anyway, good morning from Kentucky, home of Kentucky Bluegrass and the Kentucky Derby. Could have been worse, it could have been Avery. You are correct, it could have been Avery. God, I wouldn't want to visualize that in the dark. How much further? We got three hours to go to Asuyas to get the uh, Pathfinder we bought. We got to get across the border one more time, hopefully with no issues, and uh, three hours home. Hey, Saskatchewan, you guys almost killed us twice in Saskatchewan. I don't know. <laughs> Are you stopping at the shop, dropping everything off, and then we're grabbing Lincoln? Yeah. Yes, we're going to uh, Pontypool, Ontario. Mike, shout out to Stephen John. Kentucky is where Corvettes are made. I have a couple. Hi from the Faith in Oklahoma. Did we go through Oklahoma? Oklahoma? Uh, remember the Sesame Street? Oklahoma. Hey, Oklahoma. Anyway, it was, it was fun. yes. Thanks for taking us. And thanks for coming along, guys. It's been a long journey. Starting to feel a little worn down. Was, Maybe next time I'll be younger when I do it. That was the heavy rain. Love that. No shit. Love that CUA. So shout out to Razor Ray. Hopefully that's not because you're doing anything funny with razors, Ray. <laughs> Great sense of humor. Hi from Prince George. You guys are badasses or assholes. One of the two. I keep I'm having a hard time reading the comments. The hey, guys. Next time, fly. Do I miss Lincoln? Yes. I miss everything except the shrieking. That a part I don't miss, but he's going to be one happy camper. Uh, we should be going through Ontario this summer. We're supposed to be going to uh, Frex Rod in Fredericton. Faith, love you guys. Okay, guys, we got to get back on the road. Here. It shouldn't be DEF. Sign out, Matt. I got to okay. go. Remember, guys, those that have should give peace, love, and joy. And uh, tonight, I'm going to sleep like a baby. I'll watch you uh, take, leave here. Grab hey, your receipt. Blue Moose. Meet you at the Blue Moose. Blue yeah. Moose. There we go. Going to the Blue Moose blue and moose. hope for coffee, guys. Okay, what am I doing here? Why am I? Uh, Mike's pressed all these buttons now. Okay, anyways, you're going to get see him leave here. Hey, Matt. Maybe I should put this back on. The cap? Oh, yes. Maybe you should put the cap back on. Uh, I think I'm a little goofy this morning, Yeah, just be careful.
And off he goes. Okay, guys, awesome. Thanks for watching along. Me and my passenger. We'll see you guys in a little bit.